I'll make the motion to start the meeting. Second it. Right. Second it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know if there's any public comments to go over right now. Uh, I didn't receive any uh, requests to join the meeting or correspondence. Okay, so I must mean we're doing a pretty good job, huh? <laughs> there you go. I'm sure Mr. Mayor will agree with us. In fact, let's get things going. Uh, Happy New Year. Welcome aboard. And uh, uh, let's hear what you got to say for this year. Well, I, I wish I had a, a crystal ball, uh, John. First, I want to thank everybody for coming on board and um, you know, joining this meeting tonight. Um, yeah, if, like you said, if, if I had a crystal ball for, uh, for last year, we would have known a little bit better uh, and you know, better planned and better prepared for it. But um, you know, I'm looking through uh, the agenda and you know, a lot of things that are on here. Um, I know I've seen in the past, uh, obviously last year, uh, some of them are carryovers from last year. Uh, and then some of them are even, you know, date further back than, than that. Um, you know, you, the CIAC does a, a great job of prioritizing and um, putting things into, you know, great categories for, for which they need to be done. And, and, you know, my hat's off to Sally and Derek and Peter for doing that when it comes to uh, each of the issues out there that the, the town is facing for uh, certain capital improvements. Uh, for, for this year, you know, I think we're in a better position today than we were when we were doing the budget, you know, even planning the budget in, in May and, and that got extended by governor's executive order into June. Um, I feel confident, you know, I, I don't know where Gary is on the, with the town manager on, you know, budget numbers, uh, or funding from the state. Um, but we have had a, you know, our budget has been pretty good. Um, you know, everything that we're looking at uh, uh, doesn't point in any, you know, negative direction. Um, so I would imagine there is obviously there is going to be funding for um, certain priorities. Um, that's, you know, kind of where I'm, I'm going to leave it up to, uh, to you guys. Uh, I know, you know both Peter and um, I believe Sally and, and definitely Derek uh, have some items on this agenda. Um, Brooke, I haven't gone down to the library one just yet, but uh, if it's similar to uh, to last year's uh, Windows update, and uh, I think the book um, uh, return or, or filing um, system, um, yeah, I, you know, for something like this, I'm all ears, and uh, you know, we'll look at uh, everything that is being presented. Um, and hear from you guys some of the priorities, some of the things that we we must tackle. That's been you know on the on the list for too long, and and we kind of want to get them get them off. Um, early on in the budget discussions last year, I'm kind of one of those folks, and probably to the demise of my wife, I don't squirrel away money uh, as much as I possibly should. If I see something, I buy it outright and, and one and done, and I know I'm, I'm done with it. Uh, so something like that, uh, with that in mind, if there's any of these projects that we can, you know, get off this list, uh, be it, you know, a small hundred thousand dollars or, you know, upwards of, um, 180, 200, 140,000, if it means that it's just completed, I would like to see that as a priority where we can, uh, you know, whittle away this list because I guarantee next year it's going to be, um, you know, just as long. Um, you know, I don't have any real set priorities for this. You know, I, I take direction from staff, uh, as we all do, uh, for, for the priorities, but, um, with keeping in mind that, uh, you know, if we can get some projects accomplished and, and done, um, would be, uh, you know, kind of a priority for me. Um, I see Tom Mazzarella on as well. I don't know if the deputy mayor has any comments that he wants to make at all, but, um, you know, we're all ears when it comes to uh, um, the CIP. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of very worthwhile um, per, uh, issues and, and plans on, on here. So, like I said, if we can start tackling them, would be great. I, I agree with you, Mike. Um, and that's what this committee has been doing the last few years, actually. We don't want things on the list forever. Uh, if we can afford it, let's get it done. 
and get it off. Cause like you said, every year the list keeps growing. So I think uh, this committee is all on the same page as you of being a goal of getting things paid for, bought, whatever it needs to be and get them off the list. So I thank you very much. I agree. I agree personally. Thank you. Anyone else? I agree. I mean, I think um, the list actually total request this year, anywhere near as much as they usually are. So we must be making some progress. Yep. Yep. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Mayor? Good. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll uh, stay on as long as I possibly can. I'm cooking dinner tonight. My wife's still at the hospital, but uh, um, I'll stay on as long as I possibly can and, and listen That's in. Make those peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for all of us tonight, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, kibasa and pierogies. We're going. Uh, pull -pull. There you go. Excellent. <laughs> hey, yeah, Mike, you like that, huh? Oh, yeah. Very good. It's right up my yeah. alley. Perfect. Well, I'll let you guys do it. You're in capable hands with some of the best staff in, in town hall to uh, to give direction. So um, I got the it. list right here in front of me. So I'll listen in. All right. Thanks. Derek, you want to get things going with the discussions of economic development needs? I'll turn that over to Peter. So we're going to be ready, Peter. Okay, thank you, Derek. Thank you, Chairman. Um, for the record, uh, Peter Gillespie from the Planning and Economic Development uh, Office here at Town Hall. Uh, I have uh, two requests this year. I think last year uh, I passed on, uh, on any requests. So I think it was a zero year for our department last year. Um, so I've got two requests this year. The first is uh, $50,000 to contribute toward our facade improvement program. That's one of our longest standing programs in town has been very successfully utilized by the business community. I believe you should have received in your packet uh, a PowerPoint um, presentation uh, that summarized the program and gave you some examples of projects that we've funded over the years. So I won't get into the details of that unless you have uh, any questions. But um, at this point in time, uh, we have approximately $55,000 left in the program. Uh, this past year, we closed on four projects for a total of $168,000. So we had a pretty successful year in, in terms of funding projects. So with the remaining uh, 50, 50 or $55,000, we could probably fund a project and a half without any additional uh, funding. So um, this is, as I said, uh, a matching program. Uh, any funding we put out has to be matched by private investment. Um, we estimate that for every dollar we put in, uh, there's a six or $7 return in terms of private investment in the community. So uh, we think it's a very uh, valuable uh, program and uh, we would obviously love to continue to fund uh, the program. Historically, we've relied on the CIP funds, but we've also uh, relied on some state funds. The state funds have seemed um, are really starting to dry up. The STEEP program that we've relied on uh, was just changed this year. They used to provide uh, as much as $500,000 for each project. They've knocked that down all the way to $128,000 maximum for each project. So it's unlikely that we would um, get any additional state funding for the foreseeable future for the program. So hence the importance of um, the CIP program. If you, if you, do you have anything in the pipeline, Peter, where you could use more than 50 or is that you comfortable with that? Uh, we don't have any pending applications, but we okay. have, um, provided probably a half a dozen information packets to private property owners about the program. So folks have expressed interest and we've been telling okay. them that it's a first come first serve basis. So uh, I do imagine that there are a couple of projects that would want the maximum, which is $50,000. And that would basically put us out of business um, yeah. until we get some additional funds. So okay. uh, not, nothing uh, officially pending, but there's, there's a great deal of interest in the program. So for example, we're talking with the owner of the uh, former auction house gallery. 
Yep. Uh, and obviously that needs some funding. And also we're talking with somebody about buying the Masonic building at the corner of uh, Church in Maine. So those are certainly two projects that I think would be very worthy of funding in the program. But once again, it remains to be seen if, if they come okay. in applications. All right. Once somebody starts a, the, the request, how long does the process take before they actually receive their money? So we, we uh, require that they finish the project completely and then we refund them for expenses. So depending on a project and the size of the project, it could take you know six months to a year. Yep. It really depends on the project. But we, uh, it's a reimbursement program. So we won't, we won't give the money up front. Uh, we wait to the end of the project and they provide us with the documentation that they spent the money they indicated they would. We do put the money aside before the project starts so that it's there when they're done uh, and we commit the funds to the project. Uh, but we don't give them the actual money. We don't close on it until the project project is completed. Okay, so you won't commit to anybody unless you have the money. Correct. Okay. And do do they have to own the building, or can they like sell it six months after they get this facade money? If they sell it, they have to pay us. Uh, if they sell it within five years. Yeah. They have to pay us back on a prorated basis. Okay. All right. Perfect. So we have had a couple of projects. Uh, that they did sell within that time frame, and they had to pay us back what was left on the on the schedule. Okay. And okay, you had a second so, thing. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chairman. You had a second thing too. You said yes. Yeah, so, okay. so our second request, um, and they're not in any uh, specific priority. Uh, the second request are uh, unfortunately a series of unfunded mandates from the state of Connecticut. Uh, every 10 years, we have to review and update our plan of conservation and development. Uh, additionally, now the state has mandated that each town pre prepare an affordable housing plan. Um, so we have two planning studies that we have to initiate. Uh, one is due in 2020, and the plan of development is due in 2023. Um, additionally, uh, the Economic Development Commission would like to review and update the Silestine Highway Master Plan that we did back in 2006. So we are hoping to shop around and hire one consultant who can help us with all three of those projects and save ourselves some money since they're all due at around about the same period of time. So we've asked for $100,000 uh, to do the plan of development, to do the affordable housing plan and take a special look at the Silestine Highway uh, with a focus on what um, action items we should be pursuing to continue to revitalize the Silestine Highway. Um, so the planning process for the plan of development uh, takes about two years. By the time you uh, vet the consultants, you hire the consultants, we award the contract, and then the planning process last time around uh, took about a year and a half from the beginning to the end when we adopted the new plan of conservation and development. Um, the state has indicated that those communities that do not complete these plans within the prescribed timeframes will not be eligible for state assistance, grants, and that kind of thing. So uh, some folks have asked us, well, why don't we just push it out? Uh, we can do that, but we take the risk of um, not being able to access uh, state funds and grant opportunities when they present themselves. So unfortunately, um, uh, we have to do, um, uh, we have to go through these planning efforts and we have to provide the state with uh, that level of documentation to show that we've complied with the statutory requirements. Uh, so we estimate, uh, unfortunately, uh, it could cost as much as $100,000 to do all three of those things. Um, if we did them separately and independently, it would probably be um, another $25,000 more. So yeah. that's why we we thought it was uh, efficient and economical to lump these three together and try and use one consultant with all of those skill sets to do uh, a planning process for all three of those. I agree with you on that. Um, when is the when is it due? The program? Do you have to submit your application or your? So the the affordable yeah. housing plan is due in uh, 2022. The plan of development is due in 2023. Uh, the Silestine Highway plan is, is, does not have the same statutory requirements. We would do that probably 
in between both of those deadlines. So that hundred thousand, if you want, got some this year, next year in preparation of twenty two, twenty three, that would also work instead of. Well, I, you're I, looking I, for the whole hundred thousand. Well, now. the problem is I have to commit to a contract. Yep. And I, yep. I, without knowing that the additional funding is going to come in the following year, and then depending upon what the budget demands are that you guys are facing, uh, I, I, we have to figure that out legally whether we could actually do that. Um, certainly, we. We wouldn't spend the funds until the mm -hmm. you know 2023, the final amount of it. But I legally, I wouldn't be sure if we could agree to a contract if we didn't have the funding uh, in place. So uh, we are going to look at ways that we can take on some of the workload in-house um, with with existing staff. There's only two of us in the department, so we don't have a huge uh, a number of folks who can work on this kind of thing. But there may be ways that we can um, save a few bucks. Uh, by doing some of the work uh, with existing yep. staff, but, um, okay. so yeah, we'd have to we'd have to be mindful of our contractual abilities if we were to if we were to try and do it over two years. Okay, is that something that can be figured out over the next few weeks while this process is going on, or is that something that's going to take a while to figure out the legality of the contract issue? I can certainly talk to the town attorney in the next few weeks and and see if there's a creative uh, way. Uh, of doing that. Um, it's probably ultimately dependent upon the contractor as well and how they uh, want to be compensated. Um, usually we pay them on a sort of a um, phase basis. You know, they do a certain amount of work. We'll pay them yep. for that. Yep. You know, they do the following work and there's a deadline. We pay them for that. And then when the plan is adopted, you know, we pay them on the, on the, you know, the back end. So um, there might be an opportunity. I just, without, Without talking to, you know, the finance director and the and the town attorney, I probably couldn't answer that tonight. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right. Any other questions? Well, thank you, Peter. Certainly, and thank you for your time, and thank you for uh, volunteering for this uh, this effort. It's a unenviable task for you. Thank you for your efforts too. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Peter. All right, so we're on to our item E, discussion of library needs. And I imagine Brooke will be taking over that subject. Thank you. Hello. 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 Um, so thank you all for your time. You are still my favorite committee, and that includes the library board. Martha Keneally joins us this evening. She's the library board chair. Um, I realize I'm you just said that with both your library board chair, the mayor and deputy mayor also on the line, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Come on, Brooke. <laughs> Too many governing bodies in the room. Um, the, I am actually not asking for any money this year, but I want to quickly update on uh, our various projects. Um, you have documentation you received um, from Derek um, for two of the projects. And one is the library redesign, um, repurposing three spaces. Um, and that's an over $1 million project and um, better minds than mine can figure out how the best way I would think would be to have that become part of a larger bond initiative at some point in the future. I don't know if that's possible, but that's, uh, that's one project. Um, another project you have documentation on that you received from Derek is about our RFID um, upgrade. So this current fiscal year, uh, you guys put aside about $8,000 for our Windows 10 upgrade. Um, we are in the process of getting that done. The goal is to have that done by the end of um, this fiscal year. Um, and I'm spending a lot of time arguing with the vendor about why am I spending $8,000 for something that should only be $2,000. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, and the pandemic has set us back on that. Um, other aspects of that particular project um, include the check-in that you could have a machine check-in and just drop into a bin. Um, and I we could eliminate uh, a handful of staff <laughs> for that um, if we had that portion. Um, and I wanna you also bid out to a different vendor. So you have bid documents from a couple of years ago um, with pricing, but I wanna also go to another vendor and the Rocky Hill libraries in the process of potentially using a different vendor for this. So I'm waiting to see the results of when they complete their project as well. 
So those are uh, two of our projects. Um, there are two projects also in the lower level of our building. One is the reflooring, uh, either carpeting in some areas. And uh, is it VCT tile, Sally? Just nod your head, yeah. Um, the flooring down there uh, was uh, put in uh, during the renovation of the library. Um, and that level in particular, because kids are down there, um, they poop, they vomit on the carpet, and there's only so many times that you actually can clean it. Um, and it's, it's stained, um, you know, and it's just an interactive space with the kids. Um, and it would be really great to, to have that flooring redone. So there's that project. And another one is to a kitchen that is intended for public use cannot be used by the public. Um, so that kitchen needs to be redone. I thought I was just putting in stainless steel cabinets and or stainless steel countertops, um, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. And so that's another project um, we would like to move forward with at some point in the future. And our final project we just added uh, this year is Story Walk. Um, and Story Walk is, um, uh, and I know uh, like Peter just got off, so. Um, because in old Weathersfield, you have these um, like granite or concrete posts um, in front of certain, you know, around the cemetery, in front of certain houses um, in old Weathersfield. And what we'd like to do is uh, uh, with the library is to do something very similar um, that would last a very long time. So this is not an Eagle Scout project. Um, and it holds uh, children's books inside. And uh, there's one page in each and you walk around a trail. So we're looking to possibly do this at Wintergreen or at Mill Wood. Um, and so the library board's outreach committee, um, we just recently walked both the trails, um, just trying to see how feasible it is, but we're doing that in winter. We need to do it again in spring when the, you know it's a different type of trail, there's maybe less water. Um, and so, but the, the question really becomes how do we sustain that as a town long term, because even if the library pays for all of this and upgrades the trail for a year, eventually the town is going to need to absorb the cost. It becomes an operating expense, you know, for Sally or Kathy's department, whoever oversees that. I think it's Sally. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so Sally's not even yes. Um, you know, and even if I have an MOU with the, between the library board and, 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 and the town um, that we'd pay for the first three years of maintenance, after year three or year four, we're still going to need a long term that the trails are neatly kept because you're bringing children along to read this um, book that's, you know, di different pages of the book are along the trail and you have like 30 posts throughout the trail. Um, so that's a project we'd really, really like to do and we'd be changing out the book quarterly. Um, I, you know, and so that's, that's a potential, that's a project that we're starting to do the, the, behind the scenes work to be able to really bring it forward to this committee. But I wanted to give you all a heads up that that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, and then there are three projects that are not on my list that are actually on Sally's list that you'll hear about later tonight that I just wanna be a very strong advocate for. Anything to do with roofing, the repair of a roof or the maintenance of roof, I'm a huge fan mostly because over the past couple of months, whenever it rains, I'm dragging out trash cans and trim kill can't even come when it's pouring rain <laughs> and I've got a trash can as water's dripping down. I think we're good for right now, Sally. So thank you for the work that they recently did. Um, so I'm a big proponent of that in any town building, most especially the library. Um, so uh, go Trimco or whatever other vendor you use. I'm just, that's very, very important. Um, the replacement of the four season unit um, in the library is, a, is another really, really important project. That's been a big, big issue this past year um, where it's extremely hot and it's very difficult after I've set up for social distancing for my staff to relocate my staff. I'm running out of spots to relocate them. And it is, you walk into the building and your glasses steam up, you know, or you walk into another part of the building and it's just, you know, not good. And the other project is the replacement of the town hall chiller 
um, and mechanical systems. And I'm a huge proponent of those three particular projects um, would help us tremendously. And I believe a lot of this feeds town hall as well. Is that correct, Sally? Okay. Um, so, you know, if I could make a plug for those three projects, just from, you know, being the client of Sally, who's like, oh my gosh, um, you know, that, that would be really huge and important. So um, those, that's all I really wanted to say. We're not asking for any money this year. Um, but does anybody have any questions about where we are with the library? Well, I'm just curious why you're not asking for any money. Sounds like you have a long list and expensive list yet. Yeah. You know, is there something we, and again, that's question number one. And question number two, you commented about your kitchen for the public. You have yes. a kitchen for the public. Yes, we do. And it's a, by that, I mean that we, it's off the community room and a ground level conference room that people can come in and if they have light snacks or something like that. So we do have a space, a kitchen, um, and it's intended for public use. It's just, it's not vented properly. There's it really, I, I don't, I, I think the intention was to have it for public use and they didn't make it for public use. The countertops yeah. are just unsanitary. Um, you know, and so uh, part of this is, is uh, there's documents that I have to get together there's quotes, there's bids that we could present and ask um, for this money. Right now, I am really going to be tied up in the Windows 10 upgrade. Um, and so I'm not asking for additional money for that particular project, because that would be the funding that I, I come after probably yeah. next. Um, and so, and the other things, um, we're hoping to have some of these projects just paid with library reserve money. And perhaps not come to this committee, depending on the cost, if, if we have money in reserve that we can utilize for some of these projects um, and actually not come to the committee. So, okay. yeah. All right, anyone, other, any other questions? All righty. Okay. Well, thank you thank so much for your time. And again, you. it's being recorded. You're still my favorite committee. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Martha. All Good right. Luck. Thank you, everybody. All right. We are now on to item F, discussion of school needs. Good evening, everybody. I'll try not to take up too much of your time this evening. Again, thank you for allowing me to discuss some of our school issues that we have going on. Um, I think just to highlight from last year, the work that the staff did on the complete renovation of the Highcrest portables showed that we have a very talented staff who was able to go in there and do the work that needed to be done to make basically brand new classroom spaces at a cost of what was basically a third of the cost of what um, new portables would have cost us. And so understanding that the Charles Wright portables are similar in age to the high crest ones, the first order of discussion for potential project is to do what we did at Charles Wright, um, like we did at high crest. The biggest difference with Charles Wright is that the Charles Wright roof on the portables would need to be replaced. At Highcrest, we had already replaced the roof two years prior to us going in and renovating the entire um, project, which is why the funding request for the Charles Wright Portable um, is, is a little north of 100,000, even though we spent less on, than that doing the Highcrest Portables because we added in and factored in the cost of re-roofing the portable unit this year. <laughs> Um, the uh, second thing on the list is, and I think um, in the documents it showed some of the pictures, Highcrest School uh, is composed and comprised of a number of different roofing systems. Um, there are three roofs in particular there that are in need of replacement. And so what we're basically asking for is right now, um, last year we were granted $100,000 and it um, had us fall short 
of what we needed to do for one of the roofs. So we are requesting um, more money to be able to fix one of the roofs and also to begin putting money away. Um, while I would love one and done, I know that this request is hefty and would take up more than half of what is currently being allocated um, in order for us to really start getting on to replacing the roofs at High Crest. Sally, not to interrupt you, I thought last year we went over this and, we, and you showed us different sections of High Crest and we gave yes. you money to do one section and then with anticipation, we'll do yes. seconds, thirds and fourth. Did you yes. do that one section last year? We, we were unable to do that one section because as we moved to, and as the money became available, COVID had already hit and getting contractors and getting supplies for doing became this type of project the supply chain has been interrupted and was interrupted in construction projects quite quickly, even though it was at the time when the governor was saying, let's keep construction going. Construction products shot up in cost. Okay. And now we're in the middle of a supply line interruption. Um, I don't know if you've seen recent articles and they were talking about everything from appliances to furniture to construction materials. Difficult um, to get anything today. Exceptionally um, difficult. And now, it's also made the prices. Go ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. So, uh, but we do want to uh, really aggressively go after bidding out that roofing project. Uh, so that if we did the one section we talked about last year, you're saying that maybe 120,000 this year? And um, we, when we went, when I went and worked with Tremco, about 110 to 120, yes. Okay, so you have a hundred, so you could get ten or fifteen and, more, and get that one section done. Correct. And then we can trade on another section. Yes, if you. Okay. Um, what, what are you looking for then? What's the next most important section of the roof you want to do? Uh, you know, before we go through another winter next year, that what's a number you're looking for? I guess. Another hundred and twenty-five would be roof C. Okay, roof C. Uh, yep. Roof C, hundred and twenty-five. Plus you need some uh, 10 or 15 from the last job. For the roof D, yes. That was roof D, okay, so, okay. Yes. That would be C and D that you'd be looking to do if, yes. if, if it was possible? Okay. Yes. And okay. then leaving roof E uh, in subsequent years. Okay, so about 140K this year you'd like yes. if, to do C and D, okay. We did go out to Silk Town Roofing to give us some um, budget numbers, knowing yep. that it was not an actual bidding process. And so that's what those numbers are based on. Yeah. Okay. Um, then we move on to projects that had been previously funded. Um, I know that you've heard me say this before back in 2018, I believe it was, um, we had a significant leak in the Silas Dean Middle School Auditorium in order to get that roof replaced. Um, we needed to take the funding that had been given to the, hot, the Hanmer and Charles Wright asbestos removal and flooring replacement project. And so we'd be looking to attempt to uh, reinvigorate that project to get that done. Um, part of Charles Wright, the energy management, that building, the building systems, the heating system, and um, well, it's basically the heating system because there is really very limited air conditioning, is all run manually. There is no building management system to be able to oversee and alarm and um, help manage um, the mechanical systems in that building. We have found in our other buildings, energy management systems and building management systems are definitely to our advantage in that um, on, the, on the emergency side, they give us alarms on phones as to whether or not a piece of equipment has gone down. On just the practical, it allows us to change temperatures. It allows us to change um, timers in order to maximize our energy efficiency in a building. Um, moving on, furniture replacements, you know, we put, we basically repair whatever furniture that we can, but the schools 
other than the high school, really have not seen any money put aside for new furniture in years. And so if you walk through the buildings, you'll see that um, pretty much it probably looked like it did if you guys went to school there. Um, we did last year be, when they were expanding the kindergarten, we actually ended up getting furniture that was cast off from Farmington because they bought new furniture and we took what they were gonna throw out um, because of the fact that we needed to set up classrooms and we didn't have any furniture. Prior to COVID, the, the way that schools were moving toward was being able to do group work in addition to individual work so moving away from a desk, a singular desk or a, a singular way of doing work to where you could have more of a lecture style and then turn around and do group work, whether or not that will still be the way that education goes post COVID, I don't know. Unfortunately, COVID has not only affected the health and welfare of all of us, but also the way um, teaching is done in throughout the schools. And that's also been a very big challenge for us um, facility wise this year. Um, then lastly, the masonry stair replacement at Webb. Um, we did a significant repair on the stairs. The stairs are usable at this point. They do not pose any type of safety danger. However, they, are, they should be eventually replaced at that school. And that was also something that was a, um, a request of the superintendent. So we removed one of the asbestos at Charles Wright and um, Sam there. It says you need $80,000, but you're only requesting 75. Um, that is my error um, in that the number should have got should have been on the spreadsheet, the eighty thousand. Okay. Um, again, we're working with previous numbers prior to COVID. Um, I would hope that by the summer, that we might be able to get more competitive pricing. All right. Anything else? Any questions? I will say that the schools have really been challenged this year with COVID. Absolutely. Sally, I applaud your efforts because last year when I was going over the uh, outside with the school, uh, the little mini buildings, I'm drawing a blank on the name of them. The portables. Portables. I'm happy instead of going new, you went the route you went because you know, I did a little research on it. And I, I know you could have gone that route. And I'm happy to hear that you went that route and saved the, the town a, a good chunk of money. So yeah. I appreciate that effort. Uh, the leak at Silestine, I mean, it's leaking. Is it bad? Is it obviously, in, I mean, obviously we don't want to leak anything leaking in any of our buildings, but how bad is that leak? The leak at Highcrest? Or at Highcrest, I'm sorry, yeah. Oh, um, they're pretty significant. Um, okay. We, Tremco actually is a very good response there. Um, yep. Water is insidious. You know, once it gets in, it, it finds its way. We are... I'm gonna say knock on wood ahead of it right now. Okay, good. But for how long, you know, the clock's ticking. Yep. Kind of thing. Okay. Sally, uh, quick question. Quick question on the portables at, uh, at Charles Wright, the roof. Mm -hmm. Now would the, would the roof and the renovation inside, would that all be done by, by you guys? Or are you looking at subbing the roof out? We would, we would have Tremco do the roof like they did before um, at the ones at Highcrest. The ones at Highcrest, when they did them, they were not terrifically expensive. Uh, and so because they will also warranty the work because they're on a state contract, they do a significant amount of work around the state. It is their, their line of business. We would go with a roofing contractor. It's mostly about the warranties too. Okay, thanks. 
This is Christine. May I ask a question? Christine. Hey, how are you? <laughs> um, so I certainly understand the need for the asbestos removal. Um, can I ask about the um, BMS uh, system that you're talking about? Is um, Charles Wright, one of the schools that they, the Board of Ed is looking to possibly close, or is that on their list, um, you know, to, to keep online and, and have renovations? And, you know, you, you can tell from the question, you know, why, why I'm asking. My, oh, sure. My understanding at this point is that, and anyone who has more knowledge than I do, please chime in here is that the focus will initially be on um, building a new high crest and being able to use high crest, the current high crest as a swing space school and then renovating Emerson Williams and then um, doing work at Webb uh, or building a new hammer, excuse me. Um, would also uh, in there, I think is, is in the plan. And then with the potential of eventual closing of Charles Wright, but that could be, I don't know, 10, 15 uh, uh, years in the future. I don't really know. I think that there's a lot of discussions right now as to what the process would be for um, a facilities overhaul of the elementary schools. Um, but that is certainly being discussed at this time with the Board of Education. Okay. But I would, on a personal, like with my professional opinion, is that you're going to be in that school for at least 10 years. Okay. So an investment in, in BMS would be well worth it then. Yeah. yeah. It would get use. Okay, thank you. And also understanding that the shelf life of technology is such that, you know, yeah. if we get a 10 year investment, by that point, it would probably be an antiquated. Right. Yep. Well, well and certainly, our experience at the high school with the systems there, I'm, I'm certain are helping to inform some of these decisions about getting that technology into our other buildings certainly makes sense. Um, I, I just want to make certain that it will be in use long enough, um, you know, for, for the investment. So thank Again, you. And that's my understanding. I believe that the school board is going to be doing some presentations this year or, or providing the council information this year to move forward. I, I'm not exactly sure. X, oh, go ahead. Uh, Gary or Sally, just curious, last year you mentioned there was a a plan that you're looking over what to do with all the schools in general has that been completed and made to the public yet and i'm just curious what what decisions have been made off that plan if any the board of education had hired colliers and malone and mcbroom to do um to do reports on um the town and yep. they are currently putting that information together. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, anything else? Well, thank you, Sally. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. So now we move to town buildings, I think. Oh, uh, yes, we do. Just go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> One and done, right? I thought, it was, I thought it was nice that Brooke gave you all of, you know, <laughs> you know to talk about. Yeah. Um, right. The, the first request may seem a little odd that it's not an operational request because it's something we ask for every year, but in discussion with the finance department, it's kind of the way it happens. And that is um, the number one request is actually for our roof consultant, um, our preventative maintenance, um, five-year renewal program. It is also our leak response program and minor repairs. Um, this has been actually, especially this year to our benefit, even though costing 68 and $70,000 is extensive, the amount of work that they have actually had to put into our buildings and the amount of leak calls that we have given to them 
to Tremco has been well into the six figures this year um, under our current under our current contract. What we for any of you who aren't well versed in it, Tremco we have a contract with Tremco. Um, if there is any leaks, we call them. Um, <laughs> The reason, I don't know if any of you know about roofing, but no roofer is going to come out in the middle of a rainstorm to try to fix a leak. Uh, <laughs> so I know Brooke wants it, but that doesn't happen. Um, I'd love it too. Um, they have been exceptionally responsive. They've been a very good vendor partner with us. They were on board um, with the town prior to my arrival in 2012. Um, they are on state contracts. They give us this, that pricing. They have worked with numerous towns and are currently under contract with the state and also with numerous towns throughout Connecticut to do this type of leak response. Um, they have also provided us guidance when we uh, do roofing projects like the high school. They acted as a consultant uh, an overseer of us. They also guaranteed and made sure that the warranties are currently in effect. Um, and so, as I said, they've been, they've been a good partner with us for that. Um, and the request is to kind of lock us in to a contract where each year, so we would not see any increase in price over the length of the five-year contract to do that work. Good. Um, the second one kind of piggybacks and that is there are buildings where we have more significant leaks than just a minor repair. And there, uh, we usually put a $25,000 sum aside so that if a larger repair is needed, that the money is there and that we are not trying to um, take from another project in order to do a roofing repair. It's always our hope that we will not need any of that $25,000 to do any repair on the buildings. Um, and then um, moving on, the Town Hall Four Season unit that Brooke was talking about, this is a, um, it is part of the HVAC system. It provides air conditioning um, and heat to the lot to the majority of the library and also some areas in town hall. Um, it is an aging system significantly. Um, but I will say that we have, um, we can replace it in kind, which is fortunate for us because the manufacturer of that particular unit um, can be built, they're still in business and we can replace it with what we have. Okay. Um, the problem with it is that, um, I'm sorry, excuse me, I, I, I must apologize. The four season unit, that is the unit where we have to build one custom and that the duct board, which feeds into that system needs to be replaced. The duct work needs to be replaced. Duct board for any of you who are not HVAC people um, was a very cheap way of giving access to the air throughout the building. It is literally like, board, porous board. Yeah. Um, it is not metal duct work. And so that is why we put the $150,000 request in there. Um, we, perform, we continue to perform maintenance on the, on the unit. Um, and it's just, you know, right now it is working. I will say that. Um, but if it goes down, the library goes down. And a couple of years ago, we had a coil go down and trying to get a coil for the current unit took us about five weeks. And so they were without air conditioning for, for that length of time, which was kind of brutal. Um, 
the fourth request is a little is the Keeney. Um, the Keeney Center is interesting in that even though it is a town owned building, up until a couple of years ago, the town really did not maintain the systems in that building. Previously, there had been grant money and other monies available that they used to oversee work that was done in that building. Um, <clears throat> in 2019, the town became the primary caretaker for the Keeney, which meant that we adopted everything going on in the building. Um, and right now the air, the air handling and hot water systems are over 30 years old. And we would need to hire an engineer to go in there and really identify how we would replace and upgrade the systems in that building. Um, the Keene Center or the Keene, right? The Keeney Center, the one on Main Street, not the Keene. Yeah. Okay, the one on Main Street, okay, okay. Yep, the Keeney. Um, unfortunately, in our experiences working in the Keeney, there is very little documentation of the work that had been done on the systems there. So when we go in, we're not only trying to fix a problem, but we also are investigating how that how the systems are interconnected because there's very little documentation on that building. How it happened and why it happened that the town was not involved, I don't have an answer for and I have yet to be given an answer for it, but it is this, the situation that we are now in. So what we would like to do is get money to hire an engineering firm to be able to go in, fully investigate the building, and then be able to write a report on the systems and what um, a schedule for replacement. And that 30, that 35,000 covers all that for them to do that? For them to go in and investigate in things, yes. And write the report? And yes, to write the report. Not to actually do the drawings, potentially, but to let us know what we are going to be looking at in the future, yes. Oh, what's this one big base uh, system in the basement or what, what is the system? It's all, there's lots of stuff up in the attic, <laughs> attic okay. which makes it, there's both uh, mechanicals in the basement and up in the attic, which makes it challenging. Okay. Excuse me, one more question, Sally, on that. Do, do, you, do you know if it was one individual company that did repairs on the systems that worked on the system in the past or do you have an idea who did it or? They used a couple of different vendors um, we have been in contact with them. We've actually worked in tandem with them when they have had problems there so that we can understand what they did. That's a two-story building, right? Two. It's, uh, yeah, it's more than... Two that people use the event. Okay. Yeah. Have you looked into like mini splits and doing away with the existing system or that's... We haven't gone that far. Okay. Okay. Honestly, we've just done the maintenance on what's currently there. And then yeah. we would look to work with the mechanical engineers to see what the best way, most and most energy efficient way of getting what needs to be done in that building. Um, okay. It's a big building. And part yeah. of the part of the challenge in that building is the lighting systems in that building generate a lot of heat. So we have to, the, the calculations, and I'm not an engineer, but the calculations for that, um, you know, maybe it's incorporating, I know that they've done work changing over to some LED lighting, which would help, but all of that would play into figuring out the size of the equipment and that would be needed. Okay. All right. Thank you. Separately from that would then be, again, a phased project 
of the air handler and hot water units at Keeney. Um, okay. Put this in, but understanding that that would be most likely a second a second phase to that. Um, town hall chiller. Um, at this point, you know the town hall chiller and um, has not was not replaced during the renovation, uh, and so. It, the current chiller cools town hall and certain parts of the library that the four season unit does not. This is the unit that is a one for one swap. Um, and again, I apologize from my earlier comment. This is the one that um, the company that makes that made the current system, it's still in business and we could swap out a new unit for the unit that we have without having to change any duct work wow. in the building. What's the cost of that? That one's large. That's a $200,000 project because of the size of the chiller that is needed in order to, and I will say that thankfully, a couple of years ago, this committee gave us funding to change out the cooling tower in the library. That's okay. Yep. Okay. Yes, which is part of that system. And that was, yeah, yeah, the cooling tower is in the is housed in the library, but provides the chilled water to the system. And lastly, <laughs> um, pretty much any of these can be kind of moved around. Um, but we would be looking to replace the roof and restoration of the cupola at Old Academy. Um, that's a cedar shingle roof and the cupola would need to be completely restored by a company that specializes in restoration. Um, the bell was already taken out of the cupola. So part of the restoration and rebuilding of it would be to replace the bell. Um, but it is a, an architectural feature of the building and part of old Weathersfield. So um, it's the restoration and or rebuilding of the cupola and the copper um, of that, that would be the driver of the costs. Is it possible to look at changing it probably I don't know if the historic district commission would be in favor of that <laughs> I doubt it so we put the price in as if we were doing it with the same materials but those materials are very expensive okay. which is why it's number seven and not higher up on my list could, could I ask, this is Christine, on, on that particular building, it, that's a town-owned building. There's no organizations that have any use, uh, in the Daughters of uh, American Revolution, Historical Society, any of these groups. I, and, and I'm asking because is there an opportunity to do a, a shared you know, fundraising campaign right. uh, to, to renovate and restore? Similar to the way that Park and Rec uses the community center where we own the building and Park and Rec does their programming in the building. It's kind of the same thing with Old Academy. We own the building, but the historical society operates within that building. And so whatever programs they do are really under, are really under Amy. Anything else? Well, if I could just follow up on that, and maybe you know the town manager could could chime in. Um, you know, it is that there a possibility that uh, we could work with uh, another group um, on on a campaign, particularly if they want to restore uh, the you know the the bell and you know to its um, just restore the building to to its original state, if you will. Um, is, is that something that's possible? Have there been any conversations? 
Um, th there was when I was on council years ago, that that's why I asked the question. Yeah, and Sally, you can chime in. I'm, I'm not aware of any conversations on doing that. I certainly have, would have no issue with trying to solicit, I guess it wouldn't be a public-private partnership at that point. It would probably be a public-public. I'm, I'm assuming it'd be a nonprofit group or something. Um, you know, we can always look at potential of grants uh, to fill it in if we qualify um, to see what we do. The problem is a lot of those come with certain requirements and we might want to be careful with what some of those requirements are uh, or conditions um, are. Related. Last time we looked at grants for certain projects, there really wasn't anything available. Um, we put this on the list because from a maintenance standpoint, it was important to us. We have not gotten, um, this has not been a big push from the historical society or their executive director or, or governing board as a significant issue. Um, we were bringing it as a, as a maintenance issue. Okay, understand. Thank you. Any other questions? Can I ask? Okay. Uh, Sally, on, back on the Tremco roofing uh, work, mm -hmm. did we not uh, approve some funding for uh, further inspection of roof, uh, thermal imaging, or something like that to? Uh, See if we could salvage some of the roofs rather than replace. And did that take place or? Yes, we do. We did do the infrared. We um, did it on the schools and some of the other buildings. Um, I do have those reports and have shared them with the, the town manager. Um, some of the schools are candidates for. Uh, a restoration versus a replacement. Um, but not, again, not high crest I'm roofs, that, not the high, high crest roofs that you were talking about tonight. No, the, unfortunately, the high crest roofs um, are, are not. Are not. And then uh, the other question I had was, was the uh, town hall chiller. Mm -hmm. What did that? more towards the top of the list last year for priority or? You know, it, it was, and quite frankly, um, if I didn't have to put um, the Tremco things on here as, as one and two, um, it probably would have gone up higher. Um, it's some issues we've had with the four season unit this summer became more acute, which is why that, you know, if you take off the Tremco's one and two, why I had put the four season unit as three. Um, and also understanding that, you know, these are, these are pretty big projects. Right. Um, and right now we're still maintaining the chiller. It's still working for us. I wish I had a crystal ball when it came to the mechanical systems to be able to say to you, we have three years, we have five years left, we have 10 years left. We, you know, we maintain our equipment and we get a really long life out of them. Could it go at any time? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and just one, one last question on the uh, academy roof. Mm -hmm. Does Tremco have that listed as, um, you know, requiring replacement immediately? Is it leaking? It's currently um, not leaking. Okay. Um, it does have a, um, the cupola is in kind of their red section. Um, and the roof is, you know, replace, it replace eventually. It is not a critical okay. um, one. Unfortunately, I think that with that building, and as you are well versed, we'll run into the same issue with the HDC as we did before, right. where they're going to want it in cedar. I just want to put my plug in for supporting roof work. We we need to stop water infiltrating into the buildings. We're gonna we're gonna lose buildings if we let that. Happen. I will. 
I will also yep. say, and, and it might be a bigger um, issue. So Gary, I apologize if I'm overstepping here. <laughs> um, you know, we, we maintain over 20, 22 buildings. Our roofs are old. You know, uh, Brooke was talking about bonding. If there was ever bonding for infrastructure, I'd spend it in the first hour on, on saying yes, roofs, you know, infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. It's not sexy. People don't sit there and wave their flags and say, yay, you, you got a new roof. But when they can be comfortable in a building, that's, that says yay. So, you know, all I could say is any, um, anything we can do for infrastructure, I'll go to the wall for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I agree. I agree. Yep. All right, any other questions or comments for Sally? All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Okay. Thank Have you. a good night. Thank you, Sally. Good night. All right. Next on our agenda is old business. Do we have any old business? No, there? I don't have anything for that. Okay. All right. So we all have a lot to think about. Um, next I do want to mention, John, about uh, Stuart, now that the whole group's here. Yep. Yeah, because I spoke to Stuart yesterday, <clears throat> asking him about his uh, availability for these meetings. He indicated he's in the process of uh, moving to a uh, senior living home in West Hartford right now. Uh, so he doesn't feel he can uh, join and support the group like he normally does. Okay. Uh, so he just asked me to uh, convey that to the to everyone and just say he you know enjoyed his time working with you on these projects and um, you know, at this point just doesn't feel he, he can continue. All right. Thank you. All right. So we're on for our next meeting next uh, Wednesday, 5 p.m. Everyone. Yep. I just have one thing for next next week. I'll probably can attend about the first 45 minutes of the meeting. And I'm, I'm going to have to sign off. All right. That's fine. Uh, we're going to start going over everything, I presume, next week. Derek? Next week, we have some more presentations. Oh, we do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fire, fire department, parks and recs, uh, park and rec, and myself with uh, drainage, uh, pavement maintenance, and sidewalks. Okay. Yeah. You know, one comment that uh, with Brooke and all the stuff she's going to be looking for, didn't we talk about last year about taking seven or eight large projects like the library and town hall, this and that, and just doing it all? I mean, I know you said you right now at the high school, I don't know your situation on borrowing more money do you want to but you know some of these projects are so expensive so big that you know if we couple them all together and spend x amount of dollars to get everything done is that something that a way we could go it's just not feasible at this point i guess i would i don't know where those conversations went um yeah it was brought up last year as a way of trying to get the work done so I would, I would defer yeah, okay. to the mayor. Now, did I, did, did I miss out on Mike? Did he give us a number that we could spend this year or just? I didn't. No, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Um, where were we at? 1.9 million last year? We had two request? numbers. We, we did 900,000 for the base recommendations. And then we, what we've done the last couple of years is give you an extra hundred thousand if it was available oh, on right. the next priorities beyond the nine hundred thousand. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. All right. That's, a, that's our goal again this year: sure. nine hundred and a million. Yep, I think it is. Yep. Okay. All right. Does anyone else have any comments? Any other questions? Derek, thanks for helping me with the uh, technology side of this uh, meeting. So I appreciate it. You look like uh, a pro, John. Uh, <laughs> all right. Would anyone like to make a motion about adjourn adjourning this meeting? A motion for adjournment. All I'll right. Second. <laughs> second. Thank you. All right, everyone. Have a good night, and we'll talk to you next week.
So evening. Thank you next week. I'll, I'll, I'll send out uh, the packets as soon as I can for the next round so you can take a look at those before the Beautiful. meeting. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Art. <laughs> if anyone everybody. needs a hard copy, just let me know. I probably will need a hard copy, Terry. I expected yeah. that, Mike. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, have, have a good night, everyone. Good night. Take care, everyone. Good night. Take care, everyone.